Thank you, Senator Hertzberg. Mitch and Stewart, also thank you very much. Uh, as, we're, as we're going through this, I want to explain, but also move us forward towards the measure that's going to be on the ballot. We have some questions. Stephanie Wiggins is the deputy CEO for the MTA. Uh, she's been at the agency now seven years. Uh, Stephanie is the woman that brought the uh, managed, managed lanes to fruition on the 110 and the 10 freeway uh, and have been an overwhelming success story. Uh, when we started, these are the transponders you can put on your car. Unlike the East Coast, people in LA don't have transponders on their cars because we don't have tolls for, or bridges or stuff like that. But the program now has 600,000, 600,000 automobiles using that system, voluntarily putting that transponder on the car and saving time when going from point A to point B. It's a tremendous success. And as deputy CEO, uh, we expect great things from Stephanie. I'm gonna turn it to her in a sec partially in response to the questions that came out of the last meeting where Stephanie also participated, just to answer Bob's question. The local return portion of Measure R, it was in Measure R, 15% of the sales tax generated in a city or the unincorporated parts of the county went back to the city that those, those dollars were generated from. That way, everyone in the county benefited from Measure R, even if you didn't have a big project or a station. And that money could be used for any transportation-related purpose. In Measure A and C that had been passed in 1980 and 1990, it was restricted to transit, but we opened it up for any transportation-related purpose. And we purposely left it to the city councils to decide, and the public works boards, Kevin, uh, and the public works boards to decide how to use that money because the use would be different in every city. And I think that's one of the things that they're looking at again. 15%, somewhere between 15% and 25% is what I think the discussion is right now, but it's critically important that that money be returned to the locals, to return to local governments so every community can get transportation improvements as part of Measure R and part of Measure R2 from this November. Is that close enough? All right. Excellent. All right. I wanted to ask Stephanie, who was at the first meeting, sat with us all morning, you know, your takeaways from that and also some of the things we talked about, what, have we made progress? Um, I think we have made progress. I agree with the mayor. Um, there is momentum in San Fernando Valley. Um, a week after the transportation summit, we were celebrating the 10 year anniversary of the Orange Line and I wanna thank you and Supervisor Yaroslavsky for your leadership on that. Um, last month, we began operationally lifting the slow orders on the Orange Line to already see what we can do to increase speeds on the Orange Line. We also, um, last month, initiated Orange Line improvements, a feasibility study for grade separating the Orange Line um, as part of our shovel ready plan. That's a direct um, result of this transportation summit last October. You've heard a little bit about the process and I will stand up for our process. Um, over a year and a half ago, our board did want a a bottoms up approach, community oriented approach to developing a potential ballot measure. It's one where while we used our council of governments as the anchor or the spine or backbone of the structure, it involves community input. And forums like this transportation summit um, are part of that process and we are listening. So I wanted to just let you know that we do believe the process is working because but for listening to the summit, we would not have been making these, these changes. We also, as the mayor mentioned, we just launched our um, express bus, a pilot express bus between the NoHo station and our Del Mar station in Pasadena. Um, and in May 20th, when we opened the expo line, we're modifying some valley lines that will provide um, direct connection to the expo station down to Santa Monica. So really excited about some of those improvements and I'm really excited about the work we've done in particular with CSUN and Mission College as a result of the summit. Stephanie, thank you. It's, it, I appreciate your, your, your response, particularly the, the listening part, because sometimes you know, a lot of folks participate or don't participate because they don't think anybody hears them. You know, and, the, and what you're saying as a direct result of all of your participation in the last summit things have started at Metro that hadn't been started before. Can you talk to me a little bit about the Shovel Ready project? What's the, I mean, we love to hear the phrase Shovel Ready, but yes. now what does it mean? The idea for our CEO's Shovel Ready initiative is that he asked uh, us agency-wide to look at opportunities to advance or accelerate projects um, beyond where they currently are planned. 
Um, what it means is if something was in the environmental stage, what can we do to accelerate to the next phase of project development? In the case of the orange line, um, we quite frankly had not been thinking about grade separating the orange line in the near term. That idea really got traction as a result of um, the summit in October. So working with staff, we identified funding, and last month our CEO directed that we would begin the feasibility study of grade separating the orange line as well as looking at the other improvements. Um, that's a two-year acceleration of when we would have looked at that program. Ultimately, we identified about 20 or so projects that we could accelerate um, that on the transit side would um, bring those in faster, about 17 cumulative years. So the idea 17 is- 17 years sooner. It's 17 years sooner. Maybe so in my lifetime. Cumulative, yes. <laughs> so, the, so, the, <laughs> so the idea is to develop a pipeline of projects that are advanced enough so that ad if additional funds become available, like a potential ballot measure or federal funds or state funds, we can be positioned as a region to compete really strongly for those funds. Yeah, that, that's great news. And part of it, particularly starting the feasibility and the environmental early, because right. you never know when the feds may finally get, wake up and understand there's a transportation crisis. And you know, as, we, as the voters here did with Measure R, you know, make more money available. We, we worked hard with Metro and the last and the Villaraigosa administration for the America Fast Forward and for increasing the amount of TIFIA money, which is coming back to LA in huge amounts now and huge benefit, but you gotta be ready for that when it happens. Talk to me a little bit about your work with Cal State Northridge, because that was an issue that I, I know I think a lot of us were surprised at the last summit had exactly how underserved this area is. Yeah, I, I also wanna thank you for that. I thought it was part of the most compelling part of the summit, quite frankly. And we were so moved by the testimony from President Harrison, as well as the president from Mission College, that that same afternoon, we went with some of our board representatives and talked about how can we quickly begin addressing some of their issues. And it really goes back to what Mayor Garcetti talked about in terms of the back to basics because it's really hard to reimagine how we can deliver for CSUN if we're not taking care of the basics and the little things. And the fact that we hadn't aligned our bus service with the class schedule, you know, is really unconscionable and we can't work, expect to partner with CSUN if we don't come to the table as a, a true partner in good faith. So we were fortunate that the president opened the campus community to us. Um, we hosted some representatives at Metro, and I was just out here a few weeks ago. We have committed to realigning our bus service to accommodate their class schedules in a, a way that makes sense uh, beginning June of this year. That's great. We have committed to actually look at ways to maximize the investment CSUN has made in the transit center. We're gonna leverage technology in June with that schedule alignment and provide next bus information so that students and faculty can be incentivized to take the bus by knowing when the next bus is coming. We also know that BRT is important. Um, a few years ago in 2012, we um, implemented a BRT study. We looked at different aspects of uh, the San Fernando Valley. At, the, at that time, the level Does of Does everybody know what BRT means? Oh, sorry. Well, BRT <laughs> is Bus Rapid Transit. It's the orange line where it's a dedicated line that's separated from everything. It, that's what they mean by BRT. Yeah. Thank sorry. you. Sorry, that's I got that's wonky there for a minute. No, it's okay. Um, we were looking at Reseda, uh, Van Nuys Boulevard, Lancashire. At that time, the traffic demand pointed to focusing on Van Nuys. So we have, uh, we have started since the October summit to work on the environmental related to Van Nuys Boulevard. And of course, if the board would like us to relook at Reseda, Lancashire now with uh, new information, we'd be more than happy to do that as well. That's great. So next time somebody says to you, you can't make a difference, you know, you've heard it from the deputy CEO of Metro that the ideas that came out of that summit, President Harrison and the student body here at Cal State Northridge speaking up and getting involved, is seeing changes that will occur. I mean, think about it, it's March, and they're talking about changes in the schedule that'll be in effect in June in time for the class schedule, which is lightning speed for government. Can I make this plug? 
I'm, I, I, sure. Can I make this plug? That's what we did in four months. What could we do in 40 years? That's no. my plug. No, and that's, that's the plug for the res for what's going to be on the ballot, hopefully in November. But no, it's a great, but it's a great segue, Bob, to the next part. But it does mean that Metro is listening, and we are very appreciative of that. Thank you. Your voice does matter. Thank and, you. And can, I, can I just add something to that, Stephanie, that, that Richard and I went and met with Phil Washington, who the mayor referred to as the new head guy, what's his executive, whatever his title is, Big Cheezo, at Metro, and, um, and then again had another conference with him. All of this is an effort since October to try to listen to everybody and move the process forward. And he was un wonderfully responsive. He was scheduled to be here, um, but we changed the date because the mayor's mother's birthday, and now he couldn't be here because of this, but he would have been here, he promised to be here. So we've chose the mayor over him, and uh, he's kind of mad. Yeah, but we still got <laughs> Stephanie, so I think we came but out Stephanie's fine. Pretty, yeah, yeah like, she knows, actually knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with everybody, that we, we have had those conversations in an effort to be advocates for the Valley and to make sure that we had everybody in, 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 in the loop on that. Great. Well, thank you very, very Great. much.